Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to talk about this Dungeons and Dragons OGL 1.1 leak. Holy cows, man! Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> so you get you get you know you get the D commentators talking about um, about Dungeons and Dragons, and increasingly you can't even cover it all, right? And like. And, you know, you, I think a lot of people come to Dungeons and Dragons for the dragons and for the dungeons, but boy, they stay for the drama. And man, and I have to say it, right? Okay, I really detest President Donald Trump. I do not like, I actually, I did very well under his four years. And I will tell you right now, I never imagined in my life that I would see a worse president than Donald Trump. But boy, did we see it. President Joe Biden is 10 times worse than that Donald Trump ever was. Uh, you know, just absolutely, literally took us to the brink of World War III. Like, that's where we are right now. Inflation through the roof. I'm wondering if, you know, any of my kids will ever be able to own a house. Like, it's been terrible, right? Like, um, and so, you know, so, but one thing, <laughs> one thing about Donald Trump is he led and he entertained, right? And I, I don't think any of us are really given enough, um, enough thought to how much like hey you don't you don't nowadays you don't just do the thing you got to entertain right like and i present D D commentary i'll tell you right now i choose language that's entertaining right like you know like, you're gonna find like i'm always looking for a good turn of phrase you know like because i know you got to you got to entertain while you're doing the thing right and boy does wizards of the coast and hasbro entertain right this ogl 1.1 man it's like this is i've never seen like i've never seen a response I've never seen a response like this from the D&D community. They, like, everybody's talking about this. There's people coming over from... And actually, that's another thing I'm seeing, too. If you ain't noticing this, look at what's happening in D&D commentary. I am shocked what is happening in D&D commentary. You know one of the things I'm really fascinated by that I'm seeing right now that I am really, really fascinated by? People coming over from Warhammer. People coming over from Critter uh, coverage. Everybody's like, let's just skip the nonsense and jump where it, where it matters, right? And people are realizing what I've been saying. D&D ain't like anything you've ever seen in your life, right? It is just a different level of epicness. And it is absolutely incredible. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. So let's let's talk about this. So first of all, is the leak true? I think, you know, I, I, I don't know for sure. My, my humble opinion, yeah, I think it's true, right? Is Hasbro trying to shut the old, the OGA, the OG 1.0 and 1.0A? Are they trying to shut it down? Absolutely, absolutely. They're trying to shut it down, right? And so, and the reality is, I think at the end of the day, Hasbro don't want an OGL anymore. Okay. Now here's the part you missed, right? A lot of commentators talking about this, but they skip a step, right? They're like, oh, you know, you know Wizards of Coast trying to shut the OGL down. This is unfair to all those OGL creators. That's the part where they skip a step, right? Do we need the OGL? Is this unfair to OGL creators? Absolutely not. This is OGL 1.1 is just fine, right? What's actually happening? So first of all, the OGL came out in the early 2000s, right? We've act, we've literally had two decades of the OGL. And you know what? That's enough, right? When Ryan Dancy brought it out, it was absolutely needed. It was very critically needed, right? Because Dungeons and Dragons was fighting against... Uh, is fighting against uh, movies and television and video games, right? And it was really struggling to find its place in all that, right? It has found its place. You know where its place is? The most charismatic, confident, intelligent people in the world play Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons owns Hollywood scriptwriters, almost to a man, almost to a woman. Uh, if you are if you are any kind of coastal elite, you have almost certainly played Dungeons and Dragons, or you're still playing it, right? If you are charismatic, confident, intelligent, and you got a dollar in your pocket, you're on D and D, or or you were, all right, one or the other. Reality, that's that's where we're at. This is like, and so D and D knows where it's at, and and now it's like, hey, we've mastered uh, intellectual. We own the American intellectuals, right? And now they're like, hey, can we get some mainstream dollars? And that's what they're doing right now. That is exactly what they are doing right now. They're getting, they're going to get themselves some mainstream dollars, right? And you could see the Grognard, you know, the great Grognard exit is all up in flames. Like, oh, how dare Dungeons and Dragons try to make more than a billion dollars, right? Like, you almost put the pinky up to your lip, right? Oh, a billion. Oh, how dare they try to make more than one billion dollars a year? Oh, yeah. You know, like, even though, like, Candy Crush sold for $2 billion, right? So, 
So th this is something. We are seeing something truly incredible at this point. All right, so here, so let's get all the way there, right? So one, do we need the OGL today? Absolutely not. We have 40, we have literally have 40 D&D Cannon Hardbacks in 5th edition alone. Any D&D that comes, any Dungeon Master that comes to D&D 5e is going to have more than enough content in the official D&D Cannon alone, right? And then, oh, you're like, oh, well, what if I don't want to, you know, what if I want fantasy action? Get yourself over to uh, to Index Card RPG, which is the greatest redux of Dungeons & Dragons that's ever been done, right? And it doesn't use the OGL at all. And the reason why is Hanker and Farrell and Ale, Brandish Gilhelm, um, Ingrid Bernal, whoever, whatever you want to call him, right? He crushing it, man. Like, and he didn't need the OGL to do it. And you know why? Because he's a true creative creator, right? So the only people going to get hurt by OGL 1.1 are the derivative designers. And that's the only thing the OGL is protecting today. A bunch of derivative designers, right? And it gets worse than that, right? So Sean Merwin, brilliant creator. He's he's a fi he's an OGL creator at this point, right? And I went and I went over to Ghostfire Games, and you can go on, open up any of their weekly, you know, one hour podcasts, and they're make they're literally making their living on five o five o OGL content, and they talk smack constantly about Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, and say, oh, they they put out a bunch of junk, right? Do not give respect. It is the dog fighting, biting the hand that feeds it. And this is why we're here. Hasbro's been like, we've been putting this out, this OGL, for 20 years. What do we get for it? None of these derivative designers defend us. They all talk smack about us, right? They are biting the hand that is literally feeding them. And you know what? They're going to play, man. You can put that dog out. Let it go find its own, right? Like, no, no reason keeping that dog in the kitchen and feeding it every day. Because it bites your hand, right? And that's where we are. The OGL is just a protection for derivative designers. And the, great of cre the greatest creative creators are moving on and creating their own stuff. And I'm part of that. I gotta, I'm got i building a, a tabletop role-playing game right now, right? It's called Forges and Force. You'll find it right here. I ain't messing with the OGL. I ain't some derivative designer trying to copy Gary. I'm trying to beat Gary, right? And that's the point. All y'all derivative designers can just shuffle off. Ain't nobody need none of your nonsense content in 2022, right? We got full art, amazingly read, amazingly laid out, amazing art, D&D canon hardbacks, more than any Dungeon Master could ever run in their life. Ain't nobody need one more piece of OGL junk. Nobody needs their garage energy, like derivative designer nonsense. OGL done. Let it fly off. I don't care if it blows away in ashes. I really don't, right? In fact, I think it'd be better. It'd be better for Dungeons & Dragons at this point. Now, I do want to say, the OGL, when it came out, it was baller, and it was needed, right? And Ryan Dancy is a major pillar of Dungeons & Dragons, and he is one of the reasons why Dungeons & Dragons is epic today. And all the energy that went into um, it went into OGL uh, material uh, between like 2001 and 2007, right? All that was very needed. And I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful to Ryan Dancy. And I'm thankful to, to the creators then, right? But if you on the OGL two decades later and you're spitting your noise, like you, you like Ghostfire Games has the audacity to make their living on Dungeons and Dragons and talk smack in every podcast about them and say how pablum their, their content is, right? And the reality is, Go find games. Stuff is junk. It is nothing compared to a actual, uh, you know, uh, to Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen. And so they have the the audacity to make their living on them and insult them at the same time. Let's put this dog out to the field. Let them go find their own, right? And that's the other thing is everybody's like, oh, it's the end. It'll ruin D and D. It'll ruin the OGL, right? Ain't gonna ruin D and D. D and D don't need the OGL, not one bit. D and D don't need DM skilled. That is a pen they play, They set up to let the dogs play, all right? They don't need any of that, all right? And frankly, I think they'd be better without it. And the reality is every single one of these OGL creators, all they need to do is just shift it over and move on. All that's my humble opinion. I'm ready to hear yours. Please, please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.